In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. We come together this morning as God's family, as sons and daughters of the Father and brothers and sisters in Christ, and we ask our loving Father's forgiveness, for he is full of kindness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray, O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the prince of Tar, thus says the Lord God, because you are haughty of heart, you say, a God am I. I occupy a godly throne in the heart of the sea, and yet you are a man and not a God. However, you may think yourself like a God. Oh, yes. You are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that is beyond you. By your wisdom and your intelligence, you have made riches for yourselves. You have put gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom applied to your trading, you have heaped up your riches. Your heart has grown haughty from all your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have thought yourself to have the mind of a God, therefore I will bring against you foreigners, the most barbarous of nations. They shall draw their swords against your beauteous wisdom. They shall run them through your splendid apparel. They shall thrust you down to the pit, there to die a bloody corpse in the heart of the sea. Will you then say, I am God, when you face your murderers? No, you are a man, not a God, handed over to those who will slay you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised at the hands of foreigners, for I have spoken, says the Lord your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is I who deal death and give life. It is I who deal death and give life. I would have said, I will make an end of them and blot out their name from men's memories. Had I not feared the insolence of their enemies, feared that these foes would mistakenly boast. It is I who deal death and give life. Our own hand won the victory. The Lord had nothing to do with it. For they are a people devoid of reason, having no understanding. It is I who deal death and give life. How could one man rout a thousand, or two men put ten thousand to flight, unless it was because their rock sowed them, and the Lord delivered them up? It is I who deal death and give life. Close at hand is the day their disaster, and their doom is rushing upon them. Surely the Lord shall do justice for his people. On his servants he shall have pity. 
It is I who give death and give life. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus Christ became poor, although he was rich, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you. It will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for men, this is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. When Peter said to him in reply, we have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne in glory, will yourself sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses and, or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for the sake of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Trying to understand scripture without understanding ancient Palestine is a dangerous thing. You see, many people think that Jesus is referring to a camel going through the eye of a sewing needle which of course is impossible. So they conclude it's impossible for a rich person to get to heaven. This is absolute nonsense. You see, when Jesus spoke, he drew from images which were very common to the people, to the disciples, to all, everyone who heard him. And everyone knew what the eye of the needle was. You see, in the cities in Jesus' time, especially in Jerusalem, the, the city was surrounded by a wall. And in the front, in one area, there was a gigantic gate. And that gate would be opened in the morning so that commerce could take place and caravans could come in and out of the city. But at night, that gate had to be closed because raiders and robbers and marauders would come in and sack the city. So they had to keep the gate closed. But sometimes a caravan arrived at night and they couldn't stay outside the gate. That was too dangerous. The gate needed to be open, but they wasn't gonna open the gate. So you see, in one of, the, one of the doors of the gate, there were two big doors, and one of the doors was cut out another gate. It was a little shorter than a normal doorway and a little bit wider. And that, that particular, um, doorway was called the eye of the needle. Now when a caravan arrived at night and they had to come in, the only way to get them through was to go through that little gate. Now camels are pretty big. So what they did was they would take all the pos their possessions, all their riches that they were carrying on the camel, they would take it off and the camel would get on its knees. You've seen pictures of camels getting on their knees. They get on their knees and it would crawl through the gate. So what Jesus was saying is that we cannot be attached to our possessions. We cannot be attached to riches and status and all the things. And sometimes we might even have to get on our knees to enter into the kingdom of God. But the kingdom is open to all people. So you see, a camel can go through the eye of the needle, but not if it wants to carry all of its stuff with it. 
We have to surrender ourselves to God in order to rid ourselves of earthly desires which lead to our downfall. Now, what could prevent a rich person from obtaining heaven? Wealth, rather than being a means of producing good, often becomes an end in itself. We see that a lot with some of our billionaires and thing around, around the world. You see, that all they care about is making money and not improving the lives and improving everyone around them. During Jesus' time, the wealthy obtained their riches by taking advantage of those who were poor. And Jesus' message was contrary to that practice. He chose to be poor. You see, he chose to live a, a simple life without all the trappings of wealth. He advocated for those who were oppressed and those who were poor, and he recognized their surrender to God because they had nothing. They just surrendered everything to God. He instructed his disciples to do the same thing. A second image that Jesus implies is that, the that of the conqueror. In his culture, it was the victorious warrior who was given the throne. Jesus refutes that right of the conqueror to take the throne at the expense of powerless victims. He proposes instead that those who live in love and peace, they're the ones who find true reward. If you live as God asks you, you will know the greatest of riches. What then do we draw from this lesson today? Jesus is telling the disciples that to follow him involves changing the way they live their lives. For a disciple, life cannot be lived by violence or oppression. One's action must be founded in love, even though it may mean losing everything to us that is precious. And now let us offer our prayers this morning to our loving God. We pray for our, our world torn by strife and division, that the Lord will send harmony and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all those who are ill, those who are suffering from various ailments, those who are in some of the nursing homes right now that are having COVID outbreaks, that the Lord will send healing and wholeness, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who've gone before us, our loved ones, that they will see everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pause for your own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord and Loving God, hear our prayers. Those that we've spoken and the ones that remain in our hearts. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash from the nicotines and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, 
but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through with whom you raised Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the pastoral mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops and clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. May the glorious body and blood of Jesus Christ be to our atonement, save the rest of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your, your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our um, Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, come and visit battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Memorari. Let anyone who is led to your protection implored your help and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we turn to you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate. Do not despise our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing, who reigns now with Christ our Redeemer and King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. Most holy and immaculate virgin and our mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge, and our hope. We thank God for all the graces received through your intercession. Mother of perpetual help, we promise to love you always and do all we can to lead others to you. Mother of perpetual help, confident of your most powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces, the strength to overcome temptation, a perfect love for Jesus Christ, and a holy death, so that we will live with you and your Son for all eternity. Let us pray to be open to God's word. Mother of perpetual help, we continually sought the meaning of God's words and actions in your life. As we listen to God's word, may the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us kneel and pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed. The Almighty has done great things for you. Mother of perpetual help, we call upon your most powerful name. Your very name inspires confidence and hope. May it always be on our lips, especially in time of temptation and at the hour of our death. Blessed Lady, help us whenever we call on you. Let us not be content with merely pronouncing your name. May our daily lives proclaim that you are a mother in our perpetual help. Let us pray for our temple once, mother of perpetual help. We pray for the things that we look for for you. We implore your help in the problems of our daily lives. Trials and sorrows often depress us. Misfortunes and privations bring misery into our lives everywhere we meet the cross. Comfort the afflicted, beg your son Jesus to strengthen us as we bear our burdens and to free us from our suffering. Or be it the will of God that we should suffer still longer, help us to endure all with love and patience. May we follow the example of your son and through him, with him, and in him, Commend ourselves to the care of our Heavenly Father. Let us now stand and present our petitions and our thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Listen now to the people of God gathered here to honor our mother perpetual help. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and to our bishops and priests, and to the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit and deepen in their faith and choosing their vocation in life. Count, uh, grant, uh, grant us continued health in mind and body and help, help the sick to regain their health according to your holy will. 
Grant eternal rest to all our deceased and to the souls of all the faithful departed. Let us now pause and, and present our own petitions to our mother of perpetual health. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. Accept our thanks for the graces received through the sacramental life of the church. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we've received. Let us pause now to silently thank our Mother Perpetual Health for the favors we have received. Please kneel as we pray for the sick. Lord, look upon your servants laboring under body weakness. Cherish and revive the souls which you have created, so that purified by their sufferings, they may soon find themselves healed by your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you that he may defend you, within you that he may sustain you, before you that he may lead you, behind you that he may protect you, above you that he may bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help, mother of perpetual help. You have been blessed and favored by God. You became not only the mother of the Redeemer, but the mother of the redeemed as well. We come to you today as your loving children. Take care of us. God who is mighty has done great things for you, and his mercy is from age to age on those who love him. Our greatest fear is that in time of temptation, we may fail to call out to you and become lost children. Intercede for us, dear mother, in obtaining pardon for our sins, love for Jesus, final perseverance, and the grace to always call upon you, mother of perpetual help. Let us now stand and unite with Christians of all ages in praising Mary and committing ourselves to her powerful protection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate as a mother ready at every moment to help us. Grant, we beg you, that we who call upon your help may always enjoy the fruit of your redemption. We ask this through you, who live and reign forever. In heaven the blessed, your 